you this morning. But I know that what the songwriter said, in that he said, God, I would never have made it had it not been for you. I don't know about you this morning, just want to take the time again and just to welcome you to the house of the Lord, welcome to the presence of the Lord. And for those who are joining us for the first time, welcome, glad that you're able to join us, glad that the Lord spoke to your heart and told you to come and join us and to hear what he has to say, not only about him, but as it relates to his relationship, his love and his walk for you. Thank you. We are, we have been rather on this pathway. We have been talking about this A, B, C, D, E, um, of a covenant relationship with God, talking about a covenant relationship, what's entailed in a covenant relationship, and what God does within the confines of a covenant relationship. We talked about A, which was access, B, we talked about, which was the blessing, C, we talked about commitment, and then D, today we're going to talk about how God defends us in a covenant relationship. And I just want to... I'm going to pray because, again, Sir Wesley, I may go down a different path, and I just love what the Lord is doing. Again, as I've said to you before, the greatest thing that I can do as a pastor is to just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, teach you to work through the uncomfortableness of that. Because sometimes when God gives you a word and he continues to add to it and add to it and add to it, it is your responsibility and mine to make sure that what we do, we follow God and not just... Um, what we have before us. He gives that to us, but I believe it is our responsibility to always communicate the heart of God to his people. So if God uh, were to divinely interrupt and say, you know, do this or add this to what I've given you, it is your responsibility and mine to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. So I just think at this time, I am going to pray still waiting on him. He has given me a message which is outlined. We're going to talk about how he defends us. But during my time of pray and continue to pray, he just continued to speak to me. He has given me some additional things to say to us. And I just want to make sure that I am obedient and I follow his lead. And let us pray. Father, we come before you this morning. And we pause amidst everything. Everything, oh God, that is before us, everything that is unfinished, all the oppression and the depression, all the antagonists, everything, God, that uh, would cause our mind and our hearts and our heads just to vacillate back and forth because uh, those things may are still creating disruption and distractions in our lives. So we pause this morning. And the reason we pause, God, is to ask you to go before us. And by you going before us, God, you are going to clear a path where you're going to create a buffer. And this buffer that you create, God, is for us to be in that space and in that time where you can communicate to us, you can download information to us, where which nothing will distract and prevent the information that you want to share to get into our hearts. Spirit of the living God, we just pause. And I'm just praying and asking you, Lord God, to settle the affairs of our minds and our hearts. Everything that is unfinished, everything that is a question, I'm asking you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, to supernaturally touch your sons and your daughters. And by you doing so, God, you will remove everything that have been coming up against them, that have caused them to be in a state of worry, in a state of flux, and in a state of doubt. And as the songwriter rightfully say, fight this battle for me and help my unbelief. Fight this battle for me. Fight this battle for me, God. Fight this battle for us. Fight this battle for us. The battle that is in our minds and in our hearts, the battles, oh God, that are before us that we know, God, if we go into next week or into the next six months, God, it is going to be catastrophic for us. But we pause this morning and we're asking you to fight this battle for us. 
find us, O oh God, and give us the assurance. As the word of Bob Marley rightfully say, don't worry about a thing because every little thing is going to be all right. It's going to be all right, God, because you are fighting this battle. You are going before us and you are going to clear a path. As the psalmist rightfully say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me and because you are with me, it makes all the difference in the world. And so we pause asking you to go before us. God, we look to you this morning and we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. The A, B, C, D, E of a covenant relationship with God. This morning, we're going to look at the word D. And we're going to talk about how God defends us because we are in a covenant relationship with him. Amen. We're going to talk about and look at how he defends us because we're in a covenant relationship. And for those who are not in a covenant relationship with him, it is my prayer that you would look at your life, look at how things have been going. And as the word of God goes forth, you will make a decision to change allegiance or alliance and you will align yourself with God, knowing that there is protection, knowing that uh, he is going to fight against any and everything that fights against you. Amen. Two passages of scripture we're going to look at this morning. The first passage of scripture comes from Isaiah chapter number 59, we are going to read from verses uh, 19 through to 21, and then we're going to jump over to uh, Psalm 46 and just read one verse, verse 10. Again, two passages of scripture that we're going to look at this morning. Uh, again, Isaiah chapter number 59, we're going to start at verse 19, excuse me, and then we're going to go to Psalm 46. And then we're going to hear the word of the Lord. Isaiah chapter number 59, starting at verse 19. It says here that, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. And we know that the sun rises in the east. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Again, I just want you to hear that. And I'm going to read it so you hear it. You will continue to hear me use this phrase throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the rest of this service to help you to understand what it looks like when God defends us. Again, it says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. The Redeemer will come to Zion and those who turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. Verse 21, it says here, As for me, say the Lord, this is my covenant with them. This is my covenant that I make with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendant, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, saith the Lord. For this time is forevermore. And it is important that we understand that the covenant relationship that we come into with the Lord, we are not the only beneficiaries of what God does within the confines of this covenant relationship. I want to position it to you this way, that the covenant relationship that you come into and you live under, your children, 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 children will benefit from your decision to come into a covenant relationship. And again, within a covenant relationship, the Bible said that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God is going to lift up or raise a standard and the standard that he lifts up against the enemy that comes in against you. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Psalm 46, and we're going to jump to verse 10. Here is what it says. It says now, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the nation and 
I will be exalted in the earth. And just uh, for, for, for a little bit extra, I'm going to read verse 11. It says that the God of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. And the question for you and I is, do we have the know-how to be still when God is at work in our lives? Do we know how to take our hands off of it when God is doing the heavy lifting and not interrupt what God wants to do, is doing, and is going to do in our lives? Father, your word has gone forth. Let me decrease and you increase. Speak to the minds on your heart of your people who are ready to hear what you have to say. God defend those who are his. God is not going to sit back and watch the enemy or our antagonist begin to do things to us and not come in and fight for us. So I want you to understand that that's the God that we serve. The reason that you and I are not uh, 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 overrun, the reason why you and I are not defeated, the reason why you and I are still standing is because God has placed an edge of protection around us. We read that when we read the book of Job. Again, when you read Job chapter number one, it opens up and it tells us that Job was a man who eschew evil. He lived a life that was righteous. The enemy come, saw Job living under and in a covenant relationship with God. And he had some questions that he had to ask. He began to look at Job. He begin to look at what God was doing in his life. And uh, uh, God looked uh, at the enemy looking at Job and he asked him the question, have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth. He is a man who eschew evil. In other words, he shun evil. He puts evil to the side. He doesn't entertain. He doesn't make himself available where evil will come in the midst of his dwelling, entertain it, and allow evil to perpetuate or live or to flow throughout his life. God was bragging on Job, saying there is none like him in the earth. And I just want to ask you the question, because I'm going to provoke you this morning as I talk about how God defends us in a covenant relationship with God. What if God were to brag about you this morning and the enemy hear God bragging about you decide that, you know what, let me put to the test what God is saying about this individual or that individual. What would your response be if you were a fly on the wall and you were to hear that conversation? At what point in the conversation would you interrupt it and say, God, 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 hold, 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 hold. God defends you. And all you have to do when he's defending you is what Psalm 46 instructs us to do. That is to be still. To be still and watch God work it out and fix it. Psalm 59, sorry, rather Isaiah 59 that we read. One of the things that we do here is when we read God's word, we begin to ask some question. And the question that we ask is, what do we know from the text that we have read? Here's what we know. In verse 15, in verse 19 of Psalm 59, it informs us that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the Lord will lift up a standard against our enemy. Who or what is our enemy? I believe that is a question that we have to ask in order to understand because if we know and understand who or what our enemies are, then we can begin to appreciate what God does for us. Understand this, your enemy, and this is what the Lord tells me to tell you, it's anything or anyone who opposes you and the call on your life to live out your God-ordained destiny. Your enemy is anything or anyone that is contrary to the word of God and is established truth in your life. Let me say that again for somebody. Who or what is your enemy? Your enemy, again, is anything or anyone who opposes you and the call on your life to live out your God-ordained destiny. Your enemy is anything or anyone that is contrary to the word of God 
and is established truth in your life. When we read St. Matthew chapter number 16, and if you were to read from 22 through 24, we see that Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross. And when he was getting ready to go to the cross, we saw that Peter in a moment of passion and in a moment of not really thinking this thing out, he came and he was trying to stop Jesus from going to the cross to fulfill his God-ordained purpose and destiny. And it is in this moment where Jesus looked at Peter and he rebuked him and he looked beyond Peter and he saw what was positioned or what was provoked in Peter to try and stop it and he said I rebuke you Satan in the name of Jesus and we might look at it and say what uh, why would he call Peter Satan he was not calling Peter Satan but what he was looking at he saw uh, 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 who was behind the request to try and stop him from going to the cross and he understood that that was his enemy, and so Jesus, in that moment in St. Matthew chapter number 16, he rebuked the enemy. Understand this about your enemies or my enemies, is that when they come against you, your enemies have a known reputation for hurting, destroying, and ruining lives. And sometimes because of the reputation that these known and unknown enemies have. That is what strikes fear inside of us. And we're going to talk about that a little bit because understand this. The enemy that opposes you may have a trophy or they may have a laundry list of lives that they have ruined. And when those enemies make their ways towards you, it is enough for you and I to be fearful and it is enough for you and I to cower and it is enough for you and I to want to turn and go in the opposite direction. But I want to say to you like Job this morning, Job when he realized what was going on in his life, Job he shaved his head, put himself in sackcloth and ashes and Job said I'm going to wait on God. Because I know this enemy is not going to prevail over me. Understand this, that when your enemies position themselves against you and begin to advance and execute action from its playbook that have worked in time past and God elevate or lift up a standard against the enemy to render the action of your enemy null and void. Think about this. This is where God gets the glory. I haven't started preaching yet. I'm just talking about what we are gleaning from the text that God has placed before us. And then in verse 20, it reminds us that because we are in a covenant relationship with God, he will do everything to fight against any and everything that fights against us. He is going to do everything to fight against everything that fights against us. And now the question is, can you rest in the comfort Knowing that he goes before you and I and he's going to fight on our behalf. Can you rest in the comfort knowing that God is going to go before you or he's going to stand beside you or he's going to meet you where you are when the enemy viciously oppose your future and the destiny that he has called you to? And so now the question is when the enemy comes in like a flood, to create this devastation, you've got to ask yourself this question, church. And the question that you've got to ask yourself, it's this. Why is the enemy uh, uh, so viciously opposing me at this point in my life and in this juncture? Why would the enemy so viciously oppose me? Could it be that there is something around the corner? Could it be that I'm getting ready to experience a breakthrough, the one that I've heard uh, and I've read about in God's word? And could it be this is the reason why the enemy is viciously opposing me the way he does? And I want to talk about two types of enemy that we have to deal with in this life. You see, the enemy on the outside, we know who and what they are. Chances are and then to provoke you to give consideration to another enemy, what about the enemy that's on the inside of me? 
I'm going to let that marinate for a moment. What about the enemy that's on the inside of me? Or preacher, what are you talking about? What are what about the propensities that I have? What about my proclivities? What about my biases? What about my preferences? What about my handicaps? What about the things that I love to do, but I hate what I do that is an enemy to my God-ordained destiny and the call that he has on my life. So you see, it's a twofold approach that, 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 that we have to fight. We have to fight the enemy that is within and we have to fight the enemy that's on the outside. God is going to help us to fight both, but we've got to be willing to give him access to our lives so he can fix the things that are on the inside that are broken, so he can work on our behalf and fight the enemies that viciously oppose you and I. And so now the question is, how does God raise a standard or he lifts up or elevate or bring us to that place where we can stand and have this sense of comfort in spite of the fact that the enemy is coming at us? The Bible said that when the enemy comes in like a flood, it says that God is going to lift up a standard. Understand this about a flood. A flood has three parts to it. It has mass, it has momentum, and it has movement. Think about this. A flood, it has mass because it's a body of water that is moving. The momentum points to the the, the rate or the speed at which the water travels, and the movement of the water is dictated and determined by uh, its ability to flow over the land because again the type of surface that the flood runs over will determine how quick and how fast and if the enemy comes in like a flood in that there is mass there is momentum and there is movement that is coming towards you the question is now what does God do in this situation and here is what he does so it says that when the enemy comes in like a flood and bring all that he has to offer God blocks or he nullifies the effect of the flood by raising a standard or he raises a levy. Let me explain. Remember when we watch on TV what happened when Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans and the water was running and the water was rushing at such a devastating pace. One of the questions or the concerns that they have is that the levy that they have build up that will cause the water to not flow over and go into the lower parts of New Orleans and create these destruction. The concern was, was the levee strong enough to prevent the movement and the mass of the water from getting to the place where it will cause mass destruction? And that's what God does when he, when he raises a standard, if you will. He builds a levee, and I'm going to talk about the levee that God does because he does it in three ways. He does it in words, deeds, and in action. So write that down if you're taking notes that that when God raises a standard, he does it through his words, his actions, and his deeds. Take a little bit of time here before I get excited here. And so when God raises the levy, he raises the levy and he blocks what is coming or making its way towards you. He raises a, a standard by matching the intensity of your enemy. And by doing so, he points out the limitation of your enemy as he continues to apply pressure and renders all motives and intent of your enemy null and void. When God raises a standard, he meets your enemy where they are. And what your enemy uses to destroy the life of others, God meets your enemy when he is exercising or executing his playbook, if you will, and God cause you to see that what your enemy is doing or it's moving towards you, he nullifies you and you stand amid something that was once fearful, you see the hand of God moving, destroying and breaking down something that should have caused fear in your life and he holds you in that moment and he breaks down something that should have been destructive and destroying you and he gives you 
and inside information on how he works. Understand this. He raises a standard by reaching down to the depths of your prison or your dungeon where you are held captive by your enemy. And then he plucks you out of the hand of the wicked, demonstrating what your value is. In other words, God meets you. He comes and he meets you where you are. And whatever it is that is viciously opposing you, he pulls you out of that thing and he frees you from that, helping you to understand that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper and everything that rises or come against you, he is bigger and he is greater than that thing. God raises a standard by nullifying the hold, the effect and the influence that your enemy has over you. God raises a standard by uh, standing up uh, to all your opposition, proving that if God was not on your side, those things would have overcome you. God raises a standard. He does this for your benefit so you can see who he is in any and all circumstances that you face and you're dealing with God raise a standard God raising a standard rather is more for the believer to see who he is in their life for you and I to come into a more meaningful and a deeper walk with him in spite of the intimidation that the enemy uh, uses to try and stop you it is in the middle of what the enemy is doing where God comes beside you come here if you will he comes beside you and when he does Keisha come and when he does what he does he comes and he stands beside you and your enemy again has a history of doing a particular thing that brings individual down and when God comes what he does he comes comes and he stand beside you and when the enemy begin to do what he does best the hand of God is now raised and he creates a buffer if you will so he then encircles you and the enemy in that moment doing what he does best cannot get to you because the hand of God is now stretched towards him and God now says to the enemy peace be still he says to the enemy, no, not this one. He says to the enemy, you, 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 you can do what you want to do, but you will not penetrate and you will not get to this one. And God raises a standard. He comes. And point number one, if you will, sir, we're going to get through this tonight because I want to introduce you to a name or a moniker, if you will, which is called Jehovah Sabaoth and that is the name of God when he comes in and he begins to fight on your behalf Jehovah Sabaoth and when we come to know who he is we will understand that God defending us he comes and he brings the entire host of heaven when he fights on your behalf because you and I are in a covenant relationship and in a covenant relationship he defends those who are his point number one let's start with that sir Wesley the standard raised by Jehovah Sabaoth and we're going to talk about that name what it means and when we talk about it we're going to understand that God, when he comes and he fights for us, I'm going to break it down and I'm going to explain it so we understand this. Because in a covenant relationship, again, church, God defends us. And he defends us viciously against any and everything that comes against us. He does so by raising a standard. Isaiah 59 and verse 20, when we read, informs us that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord lifts up a standard against him. Standard, this is what the dictionary says, or this is how the dictionary push it. And then we're going to talk about what God says about a standard. Standard, it says, here's that. It's an, ex it's an exact value, a physical entity, or an extra concept 
established and defined by authority. Customs or common consent serve as a point of reference, a model or a rule in measuring quantities or qualities, established practice or procedures to evaluate result. It's a lot. But like I said, God has given me much to give you and I'm going to give you everything that he has given unto me. The opposition you face from your enemy or enemies at times can cause you to experience pressure, both internally and externally. Tension and fear. Understand this. These emotions are validated because of the reputation, the victims, and the lives that your enemies have destroyed. Let me say that again for somebody, that the emotions you feel when the enemy comes in like a flood, they are validated, and they're validated, one, because of the reputation, two, because of the victims, and three, because of the lives that you see that have been destroyed when this particular enemy makes a beeline towards you. But I want to say to you this morning, have no fear because God is with you. Understand this. When you measure what you have heard about your enemies against your authentic experience, you will find that, you will find that, you will find that what is said about them is true. And this can bring about feeling of discontent, anger, and it can add pressure to you to want to figure it out. Understand this, the tension that you experience when your enemy is around the corner causes you uh, to become fearful and your inability to see what's around the corner can cause or create the tension to be more intensified in who you are. But I want to encourage you this morning from 2 Kings chapter number 6 verses 16 through 18. When you read this text, Israel is surrounded by an enemy. And there was this young man who was sitting under the teaching of the prophet. And he came and he said to him, Ha, ah, when I look, all I can see, it's just the enemy that is surrounding Israel. The young man being fearful, he went back to Elijah and he said to him, We are surrounded. Elijah understood that in spite of the fact that he is surrounded, that God is doing something that this young man cannot see. And Elijah then said to him, what I want you to do is to go and look. The young man, he went, and he went seven times, and when he did, he still continued to see the enemy. And each time he went, ah, I just hear the Holy Spirit saying each time he went and he looked, he was looking and he saw what was rehearsed in his mind. That is the reputation of this particular enemy. And each time he looked, something about what the enemy did to previous people in time past got a hold of him. But when he came the seventh time, the Bible says that Elisha prayed for him and says, God, open up his eyes so he can see that there are more with us than those that opposes us. I'm going to say that again. In spite of the fact that you go out there and you might see the enemy and you know the reputation of your enemy, and every time you look and you see the enemy, something about what they did to somebody or something continues to cripple you and continues to cause you to be fearful. But my prayer this morning is that God will open up your eyes to see that there are more with us than they are against us. One songwriter put it this way. It may look like I am surrounded, but I am surrounded by you. So in spite of the fact that something is surrounding me, what God is saying, I am surrounding the something that is surrounding you. And there is two parts to it. I am surrounding you. There is something that is surrounding you. And then the something that is surrounding you, 
I am surrounding that and the thing that surrounds you cannot break or penetrate uh, the defense that I've put up. So it is for you and I to understand that when God raises a standard and he brings about this edge of protection, there is nothing that can break the edge of protection to get to you and I. Again, when we read the book of Job, we realize that the enemy had to confess because he went back to God and says that you have put an edge of protection around him. And as a result of this edge of protection, I can't really get to him and do what I want to do. Again, hear me, God's people, that when God lifts a standard against the enemy, he raises a standard, he uses his words, he uses his actions, and he uses his deeds. And we're going to talk about that. Again, in 2 Kings chapter number 6, when Elisha prayed for this young man, he said, go look again. And when the young man saw uh, the host of heaven that surrounded uh, 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 them, there was a peace uh, amidst this very turbulent and this very tumultuous time that he was looking at. In other words, the reputation that the enemy have, that he knows that would have destroyed people in time past. He knows of the God that he served because he sees the hand of God coming up against opposition that would have done great destruction. And, 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 and I believe in this moment, his, his, his conclusion with this, that some put their trust in chariot, some put their trust in horses. But this morning, because God has opened up the eyes of my understanding, I am going to wrap my trust in him. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God is going to lift a standard. When the enemy comes in Ah, and stand in opposition of you and declare this is the last of you. God will cause you to see the opportunity amidst your opposition. And then by doing so, he opens up the eyes of your understanding to get to know him a little bit deeper. Let me say this to you this morning. That, let me say this to you this morning, that difficult times are a gift that God hand and hand pit and 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 and, and, and and causes you and I to go through, and he causes you and I to go through these difficult times to render the effect of the enemy null and void so those who are around you can see the hand of God working in your life and come to know that there is a God that sits high and he looks low and he defends and he fights for those who are in a covenant relationship with him. Understand this. So, Rosie, I want you to bring this up for me. Point number two, we're going to talk about Jehovah Sabbath. Jehovah Sabbath. And in talking about him, I want, I want God's people to be informed. I want God's people to know about the God that we serve. Because the more we know about the God that we serve, it's the more informed we are. And the more informed we are as God's people, it's the better we will it's 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 it, 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 it better positions us and we don't run we stand amidst just about any and everything that we uh, have, 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 have to face and dealing with knowing that God says to us in his word that I will never leave you nor forsake you and if you can just hear that if you can understand that if you can conceptualize that if you can move the fear and the doubt one side and just allow God's word just to be the center of it all this morning digest it like you digest other ideas and thoughts and allow his word to guide your outlook your understanding and and, and, and begin to reshape and begin to do something new on the inside. I believe that God is going to do great things, not only amongst you and amongst me, but in everything that is connected to you and I. Jehovah Sabbath. This means the Lord of armies or the Lord of hosts. The scripture says it's this way, that the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the God. 
God that we serve when we find ourselves in time of trouble and we begin to call upon him because we are in a covenant relationship with God God's word says to us this morning in Isaiah chapter number 59 that he's going to defend us. He's going to raise a standard and I want to introduce you to the name or the moniker, if you will, of the of, 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 of God who shows up and fight on our behalf. What do I mean by the moniker? Let me, let me, let me use this as God gave it to me to explain. We all know Tyler Perry and we all know this character that he creates, which is called Medea. When Medea shows up, Medea, she talks the truth. She will, uh, uh, she will do things and just expose the ignorance. There is no filter. There is just a sense of truth about her, whether you like it or not. And so it is with Jehovah Sabahath. When Jehovah Sabahath shows up, it is God showing up to fight on your behalf. So the more God's people know about him and his character, it's the more we will allow him and get out the way so he can do the heavy lifting. Understand this, that when Jehovah Sabahath shows up on our behalf, there is a peace and some telltale signs that things are getting ready to happen because he shows up. Because understand this, that when God shows up to fight for you and I, he doesn't show up because we are not in need. It shows up because we are in a battle and the battle is one-sided and the enemy is prevailing or he, 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 he has an advantage where it is now, I say it was 50-50, it is now 49.99999 and the enemy has the advantage in that it's 50.0001 so when Jehovah Sabbath he shows up he shows up and he stand in the middle of what you are going through and he begins to push the enemy back when Jehovah Sabbath shows up understand this the atmosphere the climate and the environment immediately changes when God shows up, the atmosphere changes, the climate changes, and everything about where you were, what you're dealing with, and what you are wrestling with, suddenly there is a change. When Jehovah Sabahoth announces his presence to his covenant people, by rendering the effects of the offenses or the oppression of their enemy null and void. Jehovah Sabahat is shows up in many different forms. And the question is for you and I. Do you know, do you understand, can you sense when the atmosphere is changing and it's changing in your behalf? Can you tell when God is now showing up and fighting on your behalf? Jehovah Sabahath, he shows up and he raises a standard by breaking the influence or the stronghold of your oppression. Understand this, that every oppressive force that opposes you and were victorious over others as a trophy room of all casualties of war enshrined on this wall or its trophy room. The covenant that you are in with the Lord blankets or it buffers you and in this covenant relationship you are now protected and there is nothing that can break through this 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 buffer or God blanketing you to get towards you unless you and I decide to walk out of this covenant relationship let me put it to you in a way in which the battle is now shifted <clears throat> in your behalf when Jehovah Sabahath shows up. Think about this. The story with David and Goliath. When we read it in the book of Samuel, it tells us that Israel and the Philistines are in this very intense battle. The Bible tells us that the, Bible, the, the, the battle was put in array in that the Philistines has positioned themselves 
against Israel. And when the Philistines positioned themselves against Israel, they pit their best or one of the, 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 the most destructive force that they have, which is Goliath. And they pit or they position Goliath in the valley. So in other words, Israel is here and the Philistines are here. And right in the valley here is where Goliath stands. And Goliath stands here, and because of his stature, and because of how uh, uh, the history of the destructive path that he has carved out in time past, Goliath stands there and he begins, he begins to say all of these things about the children of Israel and what he is going to do. And the men who were with Israel, they were trained men. But they were fearful. They were trained soldiers, but they were fearful. And here is this young boy who is living in and with a covenant relationship with God. He shows up, realizes what is going on, he asks what is going on, and they tell him what is going on. And he now goes to Saul, who was the king, and he said, What is going on? Saul explained to him what is going on, and while David was there, David heard Goliath saying and hurling insult against God. And this is what provoked David. Because I want to say this to you, that the battle or the enemy that opposes you may not opposes you directly, but he may opposes the God that you serve. And anything that opposes God should oppose you. Anything that insult God should, insult, should cause the stir to be on the inside. When the stir had happened on the inside, David said, I am going to fight this enemy of Israel. They look at David, they discounted David, they try to put David in, 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 in these clothing and these armor that they thought would best fit David fighting this enemy. I'm talking about when Jehovah Sabahat shows up and he's fighting with you. They put Saul's raiment and his garment onto David. And David says to them, I can't go with these because I've not proven these. And this is important for you when you stand and you're be, you're, you, are, you, are, you are still. Because God is going to use something that you are familiar with. He's not going to use something that is foreign to you for you to fight this battle. David then said to them that I've not proven these, but I'm going to fight this enemy that viciously opposes Israel and David said I am going to fight them with this sling and this stone we know the story David run towards Goliath he picked up five stone he uses the sling he whips it and he defeats Goliath you see the advantage in this moment was towards the Philistine but when God shows up the advantage is now on your side and God shows up and he's going to use what you know. He's going to use what you have to viciously oppose the enemy that fights against you. Understand this. And this is again what God says in a covenant relationship. Those of us who are walking in a covenant relationship. And as it relates to him defending us. In Genesis number 12 and 3. It says that I will bless those who bless you and I will fight against those who fight against you. Let me say this to God's people who are walking in a covenant relationship and the things that viciously oppose you. You don't have to do anything. God will do the heavy lifting. He will clear the path for you to continue to move and continue to serve and continue to worship him. But what I sense in my spirit is that the enemies, when we look on the outside, we see the enemies and again the things that they have done and lives that the enemies have ruined causes you and I to become crippled, causes you and I to become paralyzed and it causes you and I to stop. But he sent me here this morning to say to you, get up and continue to move because by you stopping, 
You have stopped his hands from moving and clearing what is before you. So he sent me here to tell you this morning, get up and continue to move. Said, I'm going to fight against anything that fight against you. Understand this point number three. I haven't done everything to stand because Jehovah Sabahath, it's with you. He's with you rather. The Bible is asking you and I to now stand. Understand this. The scripture informs us in 1 Peter chapter number 5 and 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because the adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he will devour and who he wants to destroy. Understand this. Proverbs 24 and 16, it informs us and it says that the righteous fall seven times, but he keeps getting up. And the power and what he wants you and I to understand this morning is the fact that in spite of the fact that we keep falling, the power is in our ability to keep getting up. And he sent me here this morning to say to you, get up. Get up and stand up for your right. Get up and stand up for your right. Get up, get up. In spite of the fact that the enemy would have caused you to be intimidated and caused you to become fearful, ah, now he wants me to talk with you about the enemy that is within. Because the enemy that is within will say to you, that is it. The enemy that is within will cause you to stay down. The enemy that is within will cause you to stop. The enemy that's within will cause you to want to just abort the future and the expected end that you, uh, God has set before you. The enemy that is within will cause you to live a life of compromise. The enemy that is within will cause you to say, ah, they did this to me and that is it. The enemy that is within will cause you not to go through the process where God is trying to develop strength on the inside and what God does, he causes or he brings you or he exposes you to opposition. Opposition church, understand this. It is a good thing because what it does, it develops your strength, your inner strength. So when the enemy comes against you and I, it's not for you and I to cower and it's not for you and I to duck. It tells us that God lifts or he elevates a standard. In other words, God goes and he creates this buffer and the buffer that is creates, created, rather, it allows you and I to stand in the intensity of off that battle and watch the hand of God nullify or cause the things that intimidate you to be of no effect. In other words, God render it null and void. I was avoid sharing this with you, but he just brings this back to my mind and to help you to understand that when he lifts up a standard against the things that opposes you, he does it in many different ways, shape, and form. Just get me a glass, please. I remember when I first started out in ministry. And I remember I was in Boston at the time. And as I shared with you last week that when I started this journey out, he says to me that, Ian, I've cultivated you in the furnace of affliction. And it was difficult and it was hard for me to palate because I'm saying to myself, God, why? Why? Why can't I just live like others have lived in the Bible where their path that they uh, 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 take to worship and to serve you, it's, 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 it's not as tumultuous, it's not as difficult, it's not as challenging. And he never gave me an answer to that. But nonetheless, he said, I have cultivated you in the furnace of affliction and went back to the early stage where on this particular day I got up and I was praying and I was at work rather and there was this attack that I felt and it was so intense and it was so intimidating that I went to my manager and I said to her that can I leave and can I go home? Because there is, there, 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 there is just something about 
something that I'm dealing with and I can't explain it to you. I just have to leave and I just have to go home. And I thank God for her because she was someone who was understanding. She understood that I was a child of God. And whenever I have these experiences or these requests, and I went to her and I said, it, it, it has to do with my walk and my relationship with the Lord. She never questioned. She just said, go. And I remember going home and I remember just laying on the floor. And I remember just praying with such intensity that all I did when I started out in ministry, it, 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 it was it, 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 prayer was accompanied by just a lot of tears. Uh, worship was accompanied by tears and everything that I did for God was accompanied by tears. And I remember asking God, why is it that you're causing me to go through these expressions and uh, 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 have these uh, 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 way in which I express what you're doing with tears because for me I saw tears as a sign of weakness and he brought me back to where he reminds me of Jeremiah who was the weeping prophet and that kind of cemented things for me. I remember being at home on the floor and I remember seeing myself as I see this and I remember seeing what looks like a scorpion tail that was just coming and it was striking towards me. And all of a sudden I saw this glass that protected me. And the scorpion's tail was just striking the glass. And it struck the glass with such intensity that the glass would shake in my hand as it's trying to break in order to get to me and to destroy and when I look and I go back now to that experience and to that memory I want to say to you that that's what God does he brings this thing that protects you that is impenetrable it doesn't mean that the enemy will not try but God will encase you and shield you from what the enemy is trying to do. God allow us to experience difficult times and to experience difficult people to reinforce our dependence on him and to expose who he is to us so that we can so that those difficult individuals can know that there is a God that sits high and he looks low and they themselves will have an opportunity to see the hand of God working in your life. David puts it this way, that it was good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn. The lessons we learn in difficult times add depth, value, and a more meaningful walk and relationship with the Lord. The hard lessons we learn in difficult times equip us to stand in and with assurance knowing that God will never leave us nor will forsake us. So for me, that is because this is what he showed me when the enemy came and was trying to get to me and was trying to intimidate me, God himself brought about this wall of protection and he protected me in that moment. The lessons learned in difficult times affords us the opportunity to wait in faith, knowing that he cares for you and he fight for those of us who we who he calls his own again when god raises a standard he does so and for those of us who are sensitive to the move of the spirit we can sense that the atmosphere and the climate is starting to change. The intensity of what was there, the intensity of it begins to slowly dissipate or fade. Why? Because when Jehovah Sabahath shows up, that which 
opposes you knows him and it has to move away because when God raises his sword and begin to fight, there is nothing but devastation and there is now a laundry list of the destructive path that God clears for you. What comes to my mind is when Israel came out of captivity and they were making their way towards the promised land. There were this group of people who opposes them and when they realized who they was and they knew the history of God fighting for their people, this was the reason why they back up and they didn't go against the people of God. Understand this for those of us again who are in a covenant relationship with God. God fights for you and he defends you. For those of us who are not in a covenant relationship with God, if you are here for the first time, we talked about how we view God in our life. Do we view him as an acquaintance? Do we view him as an associate or do we view him as an ally? An acquaintance, again, is a person who you see every now and again who passes you by in your neighborhood. You may have small talk with that person. An associate, a person again in your neighborhood who you may know, occasionally you stop and you talk with that person. That person may have access to your home where they can come in and sit, but they're limited again to where they can go in your home. An ally has full access to your life. If you are out there this morning listening to me and God to you is an acquaintance, I want to let you know that he also fight on your behalf. But what on the inside of you is what creates the disruption and blocks and prevent God from fully defending you. So what I want to do this morning is to extend an invitation for you to come or change the status, upgrade the status, if you will, from an acquaintance to an ally. And come into a covenant relationship with him. Because again, when you come into a covenant relationship with him, he is going to defend you. He still defends you because the scripture reminds you and I that the rain falls on the just, on the unjust. So God is not partial in that. He just causes the rain to fall on the just, on the unjust. You may not be aware of God defending you. And the things that God puts in place, you are not at the place yet where Psalm 46 and 10, it's, 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 it's known in your mind and in your heart and you do everything to be still. You may see the telltale sign of God doing something and because of the fear and the doubt that is on the inside of you, you go and you disrupt and you break up what he's doing. And so every time God does things, to try and conceal you, you don't fully understand the move of God. And because you don't fully understand the move of God, you do things to break down or to come out of the edge of protection that God is placing around you. You do everything to remove this because you think that it is stifling. You think that this is restrictive. You think that this is limiting you and this is God's way of showing you that this is what I need to do because this storm is going to pass. But you do everything to tip the protection over and when you do, the enemy continues to come and he continues to have access to your life. God continues to raise a standard. And maybe this morning... As the latter part of Isaiah chapter number 59 and 21 talks about where maybe we are living in the benefit of what our mothers, mothers, or our parents, parents, parents did. And that we're living in the benefit of that. And maybe that's the reason why the enemy has not fully tear down and destroy your life this morning. But I want to give you an opportunity this morning 
to make a commitment to God this morning. And by you making this commitment, you may not fully understand the impact of it. But I want to say this and share out of my life that I was like that acquaintance. I was like that associate living. And I just got to the point where I experienced the conviction of the word of God. I experienced uh, 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 the discomfort of trying to live a duplicitous life in that I was living a little bit for the world and living a little bit for God. I experienced coming to church where had these experience and these encounters in a service like this where the word of God would preach and I will feel deep down on the inside this uncomfortableness knowing that God was prompting me or asking me to do something and I would put it off and say the next time he comes around and he asks me to do this I will do it and so this morning I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to the Lord. Let me share this story with you, and we're going to pray. Martin Luther, as you all know, I love his, his stance that he took, because this is a man who did a lot for the body of Christ in the early 1500s, and that when he came to Christ, he walked away from a career where he was studying law, came to know God. This is what he's asking me to to ask you to do, is to walk away from some of the things that, you know, it it, 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 it gives you a sense of worth and a sense of, uh, 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 of value. Martin Luther walked away from that, came into a relationship because he knew the Lord as an acquaintance. He knew about the things of God. And when he did, he joined the church. He begins to read the word of God. He was very hard on himself. He thought that there were things that he can do in order to get God to love him more and in order to get God to see him in a more favorable, in a more uh, 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 accepted sight. And by him walking with God, He came to a passage of scripture in Romans. I think it's in Romans chapter number eight, where he says that the just shall live by faith. And when God spoke to him and revealed that to him, that works will not save you. It's a walk in a relationship. And it's the revelation that God imparts to you and I that causes you and I to have a more meaningful and a more deeper and a more fulfilled relationship with him. Came to a point where he began to look at some of the things that was going on. And he realized that the church is doing some things that is wrong. And he decided to stand up for what was written in here. Let me say this to you that when you begin to stand up for the things of God and what's written in scripture, there are those that are going to viciously oppose you from the outside and there are those who are going to viciously oppose you from within the church. But I want to say this to you that If God is for you, there is nothing or no one who can be against you or arise or come against you that is going to cause you to be broken down or you to be destroyed. God raises a standard even when the opposition comes from within. The point that I'm getting at is that when he viciously opposed some of the things that was going on in the church, those who were in the church rose up against him. And when they rose up against him, They asked him to recant and to take back some of the statements and the things that they were saying. Because you see, the church was in a position where it was living a life that was compromised. And God rose up this one man, one man to stand up for the things that are written in here. And when they asked him to recant and to take it back, he told them that, listen, my conscience is held captive to the word of God. And what you're asking me to do, I can't do. And the church decide that they're going to do everything within their power to destroy him. But I want to say this to somebody this morning. That one man and one woman standing with God 
you are the majority. If you don't hear anything, hear this this morning. That one man or one woman standing with God is the majority. And he decided to stand up for that which is right. God came. Jehovah Sabahat came and viciously defend him, vindicate him, and, 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 and cause them to see the error of their ways. We're going to pray this morning. Keisha, come. We're going to pray this morning. We're going to pray this morning. We're going to pray for opposition. That's on the outside. We're going to pray for opposition. That's on the inside. And we're going to pray for opposition. That's on the inside. So it's a threefold prayer that we're praying this morning. Opposition that's from the outside, opposition that's from the inside, and opposition that's on the inside of you this morning. And by, by Pastor Keisha praying this morning, you're going to look at what's on the inside of you that viciously opposes your future, your destiny, and the call that God has placed on your life. You're going to look at the things that's on the outside that viciously oppose you, and you're going to look at the opposition, maybe the opposition that is in your home that viciously oppose you walking and doing that which God has called you to do. And I'm going to invite each and every one of us to pray. And the prayer is simply this. God, raise a standard against any and everything that viciously oppose me in the name of Jesus. Those things internally and those things externally. We are going to pray this morning. Thank you, Lord. Father, we lift you up. We honor you. We glorify your name. Father, we thank you for your word that came through so clearly this morning. Father, telling us that anything, Lord, that opposes us, that you are against it this morning. And not only are you against it, but you will continue to build a shield around those who are called by your name this morning. So, Father, may we humbly stand before you, knowing that there are guards, that there is an army before us, beside us, and behind us that is shielding us and nothing can come near Lord God. So Father, we thank you for your promises this morning that you would never leave us nor forsake us, but that we can stand in the battle, Lord God, and never be touched, Lord God, because you are protecting your people this morning. You're guiding us, Lord God. And Father, may we stand in that promise this morning. May we remember that we have an access to you that no one else has this morning. And Father, the fact that we have that access, Lord, that we can stand with great assurance that the battle is not ours, but it belongs to you this morning. So may we leave here today knowing in whom we trust and in whom our faith is built on. And Father, that we will not allow the plans and the plots of the enemy to keep us from getting into your presence this morning. Father, we ask all these things in your precious name, Lord God. Thank you for the reminder, Lord, that you would never leave us nor forsake us. We look to you this morning and we tell you thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. My prayer. And I will continue to pray for you over the course of this week. Is that the influence. And the intimidation. Of every enemy. Known. And unknown. Will be broken over your life. The influence of all enemies, known and unknown, will be broken over your life. We also want to let you know that you do have an opportunity if you would like to pay your tithes and your off. And Sir Wesley, if you could bring that up for me. This is where 
you would click on the link and you would go ahead and do so. And while that is coming up, I'm just going to pronounce the benediction. And again, after we do, we will continue to be in the presence of God. Here in songs, that will continue to minister to us and to allow us to be liberated and set free. The scripture reminds us that God is our present help in trouble. He is our present help in trouble. So regardless of where you are or regardless of what trouble may have pop off and come and, 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 and it's making its way to you, let me say this to you again. This is what God does. And may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may the power of Almighty God unlock and blocks what causes fear in your life and mine. May the peace of God be recognized in your circumstances and in your situation. And may you come to the understanding that this is God's way of changing the atmosphere so you can know that he is lifting a standard and you don't have to be fearful anymore. May the eyes of your understanding be open as the eyes of the understanding of this young man in 2 Kings chapter number 6 were to realize that there are more with you than those are against you. And may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, may it rest, remain, abide, and may it rule your heart. And for the person who's out there who is considering trust in God, just feel like I want to reinforce this to you. If you do and you would like to pray for us, there's a chat box right there. You can just go ahead and let us know. And we will contact you. We will pray with you. And we will make available resources. We also want to let you know, just by way of notice, I finished pronouncing the declaration there. By way of notice that we're having Bible study on Wednesday nights. It starts at 7. We're in the book of John. And we're in the book of John and we're studying some of the things that causes God's people to miss what he wants to do in their life. You can join us on Wednesday night. God bless you and may his peace rest upon you from this day forward and forevermore. We love you here from a new creation and we thank you for taking the time to worship with us this morning. God bless you.